Hello friends, I'm Abby from Abby's Bookish Life and today I will be talking about some books that I think you might like based on your Enneagram type. If you are unfamiliar with the Enneagram, it is a pretty popular personality test where it tells you which type you are and there are nine different types and each of them has a different name and has different characteristics based on it. It's pretty popular right now and I truly believe that the Enneagram can be used as a self-reflection tool and as a way to kind of better yourself and find the areas in your life that you could work on and improve upon them. And so I was very thoughtful and did a lot of research while looking up these books into considering why you might like them. And I just want to say as a disclaimer, everybody of every type could read any of these books. I personally am a type 9. I've read all these books and I only picked books for this list that I personally loved. So any type can read any of these books and I am not by any means trying to pigeonhole anybody into a type or into a specific characteristic of a type. I think that the Enneagram is something that can be used for you personally and that these books might just help add on to your enjoyment of the Enneagram. When I said I did some research about the Enneagram, I got most of my information from Brene Brown's podcast where she talked about the Enneagram and in that podcast she discusses what each type's ultimate goal is and down what their downfall might be. So I use those to kind of help guide me into picking books that I thought fit each type. So let's start with type one, The Reformer. I have two books that come to mind when I think of type ones. And the first one is Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nyquist. This is a self-help book that I read earlier this year, and it is written by Shauna, who was leading a life very much like mine, which may be why I connected so much to this book, but her life was filled to the brim with activities, with obligations, with work, with family, with everything. She said yes to every thing that was asked of her, and then she tried to make everything she was doing perfect. and. That started to overwhelm her and she really just was starting to feel it in her soul and in her body and in her brain. She was exhausted. And so she used this book as kind of a self-exploration into how to focus on living in the present and appreciating everything that is and can be and, is, and just being at peace rather than focusing on making everything perfect and being perfect to everyone else. And the second book that I think you might like as a type one is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Now I've talked about this book before, but it is a romance novel about Olive and Ethan whose siblings get married and everyone at that wedding gets food poisoning and so the bride and groom cannot go on their honeymoon, but Olive and Ethan are the only two who don't get food poisoning. And so they take the honeymoon to Hawaii for their siblings and it's kind of a hate to love romance it's a forced relationship romance and overall it's just a really really cute story and i highly recommend it the reason i think it works for type ones is because the main character olive feels like she is the most flawed individual she points out negative things about herself she projects the negative ideas out to other people and she sees her sister as this perfect lucky being and she sees herself as somebody who just can't quite meet those expectations throughout the book she learns to accept her imperfections and accept herself for who she is and see that who she is is perfect so I think that for type ones it's great to see a character embracing themselves as they are, especially when being compared to a twin sister who, when viewed by society or by their family, is viewed as like the golden child. Next up are the type twos, which are the helpers. I have two books that come to mind when thinking about the helper. And the first one is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. And this book is about a girl and her family who moves into the deep woods in Alaska, a really small town where survival is key and they are not prepared at all. And it's all about the community coming together to help them. And the main character is definitely a helper type 
who oftentimes will sacrifice her own needs for the needs of her family and for the people in the community. And it's a very inspiring story, but it's also a story about setting boundaries. And I think that if you are a type two who struggles with boundary setting, it might be the perfect book for you. The second book that comes to mind is The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. It is a story about a town that is being afflicted by a disease of some kind that they are discovering and then figuring out how to respond to. This story also focuses on multiple points of view, so you get to see lots of people's experiences with this. And the reason I think type twos might like this book is because many of the people in the story are helper types and want to do the most good that they possibly can. And you see some people who are not setting boundaries and who are putting others' needs before their own. And you also see people who are setting healthy boundaries and saying, I have to protect myself and my family. And so it's just a very interesting look at all the different ways to help and all the different helper types that might be out there. So if you're a helper or a type two, check out those books. I think you might like them. Next up are the type threes and these are the achievers. So I had three books come to mind when reading up about type threes and the first one is The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams and this might be an interesting pick. It is a romance novel and it focuses on a married couple, Thea and Gavin, who are getting a divorce because it's not working and it focuses on Thea's life where she is kind of reclaiming her life and it focuses on Gavin's side where he is a professional baseball player and his teammates get him to join a bromance book club where they read romance novels and use the information they get from those to save their love lives. And so it is a beautiful, wonderful, steamy, fiery romance and I highly, highly recommend it to everybody. But for type threes, I think you might like it because both characters are very success driven and very ambitious and have big dreams and goals and will stop at nothing to achieve them. And so I think that that might be a very inspiring thing to see two people who are learning to accept that they are whole and they are special just as they are and that they do not have to be successful to be full, complete people. The next book that I think type threes might like is The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. This is a young adult book and it's a mystery whodunit book that revolves around a big group of people who are all put into this apartment building and a rich man who they're all somehow connected to dies. And they are all given clues and hints and they're given a teammate to work with and they have to work as pairs to solve this murder. I think this book is great for type threes because A, there's a very clear like goal in the book and they're all working towards it. And B, I think you get to see a lot of different types of people working towards a goal and trying to figure out what happened. And there are definitely some clear type threes. I think the main character is a type three in this book and I think that you just would really enjoy this adventure. And the last book that I think type threes might enjoy is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. It is a very inspiring novel about a theater troupe who is traveling around after the Georgia flu kills 99% of the population. This theater troupe is focused on bringing some joy and bringing some light into the world and doing something with the time that they have left. And so it is very inspiring, but it also reminds you as you're reading it to appreciate the things around you and appreciate all the things in life that are not directly related to achieving a goal. And so I definitely think if you are a type three, you will enjoy this book. Next are type fours, and these are the individualists. Now, individualists often feel like they're the only ones of their type and like they're kind of outcasts. They maybe don't feel like they fit in anywhere or feel like they have a set group of people. And so, as shocking as this choice might be, I thought of It by Stephen King. I know this is a big ol' hefty boy. It is a big boy. But I think that this book would be great for a type 4 because it focuses on a group of kids who all are coming together to fight this horrible, terrifying thing in their town. And all of these children 
feel like outsiders, they call themselves the losers, they all represent something in society that is kind of pushed aside, and then it focuses on them as adults when they have to come back together and reform this group and become a found family again. So it definitely has the found family trope going on, and it shows these kids that working together is the best way to solve their problems. And so I think that for type fours who maybe are often feeling like they are on their own or on an island, I think that it might show you a great example of a found family with these kids. Now, if you are not a horror novel person, there are other found family tropes in books as well. Many of them I haven't read, but the most popular one that comes to mind is Six of Crows. It's a young adult fantasy novel, and so if you are looking for what other booktubers consider to be the epitome of a found family trope, check out Six of Crows. Another book that comes to mind for type fours is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Elire Science. And this is a beautiful young adult novel about Ari and Dante, who are two loner type kids who don't really connect to anybody, and they meet and form this beautiful friendship, and it follows their adventures over a year. It really is a path of self-discovery and identity, and it discusses race and LGBTQ themes, and really everything that you could want in a young adult novel. And the reason I think of it for type fours is that both of the kids feel like they don't belong anywhere, and they find a home in each other. And also because Brene Brown talked about how type fours see the beauty in others but not always themselves. And I think Ari, the main character, definitely embodies this. He sees the beauty in Dante and the beauty in his family and the beauty in the world around him but feels so awful about himself. And so I think that type fours who identify with that aspect of type four personality traits might find our subtle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe to be a great read. Next, type fives, The Investigator. So I thought of two books that I think type fives might really enjoy. And the first one is Flowers for Algernon. And this is, in my mind, the epitome of being way up in your head in a book because it follows our main character who starts off performing at a really low intellectual functioning and it follows this process as he goes through these scientific experiments that increase his IQ to be extremely high. So he goes from extremely low to extremely high IQ and it's written in a journal format so you are literally seeing his thoughts from the beginning to the end of the book and I just think it is such a great commentary on intellect and on what is important in the world and for people who are who maybe identify with being up in their heads and being like highly intellectual and eccentric, I definitely think you might see yourself in this book. So if you're a type five, check out Flowers for Algernon. Another book I thought of for type fives is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Now this is another whodunit novel, but I think it reminds me of type fives because the main character is not only investigating who did the crime, but there's an added element of going back to the beginning of the day in a different character's body. And so as the reader, you are going to be experiencing many different clues that are being given to you from all different sides. And so if you are a type five, this may be a really fun riddle for you to solve and explore as you try to figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle. Next up is type six, The Loyalist. So I had two books that came to mind when I was thinking of this. The first one I think is maybe an interesting choice for type sixes, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Now this is a romance novel between two males, and it focuses on the love between the Prince of England and the son of the first female president of the United States. So it's a very interesting and steamy and beautiful and sweet and important romance, and I just really love the story in general and the political ties that were involved. Now the reason I think that type sixes might like this book is because both characters are really struggling with have-tos, all of those kind of mental blocks, and a main aspect of being a loyalist or a type six is a fear of things that are uncertain. So obviously a relationship between an English royal and the son of the first female 
American president is obviously something that they are uncertain about and they have fear over pursuing. And so I think that both of the main characters are so loyal to their own countries and their own families that it creates some issues between them and issues with their romance but the way that they get through it and the way that the book progresses and handles these discussions is so beautiful and so important and I think that if you are a type six you will love to see two people who are the definition of loyalists coming together. Now the second book that comes to mind for type sixes is The Handmaid's Tale. And this is a classic novel that's set in a dystopian time where childbearing has become extremely difficult and so a new society is created called Gilead where there are different classifications of women, there are mothers, there are aunts, but the story focuses on the handmaids who are the women responsible for bearing children in this time and replenishing the population. And it focuses on the main character's battles and the main character's life and how she, Offred, the main character, has to struggle with this new way of life and how absurd the world she's living in is. So the reason I think that this might appeal to you if you're type 6 is because it allows you to question the society that people are so loyal to and allows you to see how bravery and courage is so important and that if what you are staying loyal to is not giving your life purpose or is not instilling bravery and all the things that you find important into your life then maybe it's time to question that and not to follow the shoulds and the have. So I think that it inspires a lot of thought and especially if you're a type 6 woman, I think it would be very inspiring to see the bravery of the main character, Offred. Next up, type 7s, the enthusiast. I had three books come to mind for type 7s. The first one is Wild, and this comes to mind because the main character is focused on finding this new adventure and running away and hiking the Pacific Trail so that she can escape what's going on in her soul and in her heart and in her life. And on her adventure, she finds that she has to face the things that she's struggling with. And so I think that from what Brene Brown said that type 7 struggle with, with this running away to avoid pain, you can see that in this main character and see how she deals through it. And so I think that if you're a type 7 who is experiencing this, you might really enjoy that book. The next book I think you might enjoy is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And this I think you would enjoy because it is full of adventure. It's about a circus that comes up at night and specifically it's the story of two magicians who are having to battle it out between them to see who will be the next magician and it ends up being a romance and a love story. And so I think that this is just a really fun wild ride that brings in a lot of adventure and new ideas. And so if you are a type 7 who's just looking for a fun carefree adventure, this might be the book for you. The third book I thought of for type 7s was The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And this is a classic about a man named Jay Gatsby who is trying to reconnect with his love Daisy and it follows their romance and kind of the trials that they face and the trials of the world that they're living in at this time. And so the reason I thought of type sevens was because Jay Gatsby is absolutely an enthusiast. He focuses on providing entertainment and fun and excitement to everybody around him and he's doing it to mask the pain inside of himself and to try to escape it. And so I think that if you are a type 7, you might see yourself in the main characters and you might see how they work through their problems and their lives and identify a little bit with the process that they're going through. Next up is type 8, The Challenger. Brene Brown discussed that type 8s typically had to grow up sooner than they planned and had to grow up pretty quickly. And so I found books that I thought fit that idea and that you might see yourself in if you were a type 8 and had to grow up pretty quickly. So the first book is kind of a fun one and this is The Unhoneymooners and I talked about it earlier for type 1s but the reason that I think type 8s might also like The Unhoneymooners is that both of the main characters, Olive and Ethan, are definitely advocates for their siblings. They care about their siblings. They're passionate about their families and their lives and when the other person challenges them they are definitely challengers back and they fight for what they believe in and they do not back down and so I think if you're a type 8 you might respect seeing some of that in these characters and the book that I think 
came to mind first for type eights that I think you would really enjoy is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This book I think is a great example of somebody who had to grow up too fast. It focuses on Kaya Clark, who is also known as the Marsh Girl, and her family essentially abandons her in this marsh, and she has to grow up on her own, basically, and it follows her life as she gets older and turns into a young woman, and shows how she survives, and it shows a love story, and just how she's living her life when she had to basically be her own parents. And so I think that if you are a type 8, you will see a little bit of yourself in the main character and you will feel the need to protect her and to stand up for her because she is definitely a good representation of somebody who is being faced with adversity. And there are also some great representations of racial tension in here. So I think that you would find lots of things that you could get fiery or passionate about in this book. Last but not least, my own type, Type 9's The Peacemakers. So the book that comes to mind first for this is Little Book of Hugo because it's so cozy and warm and it makes me feel so co comfortable and peaceful and it tells you about how to create peace in your life and establish a cozy home and a cozy life around you. And the other book that comes to mind is The Help and this book is about a group of black women in the south in the 60s who are basically the help in the house and it focuses on how they are consistently just keeping peace and they reach a point where they cannot do it anymore and they decide to write a book and stand up to the injustices happening around them. I think this book is an important book. It's also a movie on Netflix right now if you want to watch the movie and I think if you're a type 9 who likes to rely on peacekeeping and easing conflict, reading this book might inspire you to stand up and use your voice to break that conflict, especially when it is something that you care about, and to speak up for injustices rather than sit by and avoid that conflict. I would also like to say, just as a general note, I think Little Women and the Harry Potter series are both great examples of books that have all types in them. So if you are just looking for a book where you can see all kinds of different characters and personalities, I think those two things would be great for you to check out because I think they're perfect for all types. That is all for me today, guys. I hope that this video inspires you to pick up a new book and try something that maybe you weren't thinking about trying before. Or if you do love one of the books that I've mentioned and it matches your type or it doesn't match your type, please put it in the comments below so that other people can see what you're reading and what you like and what type you are. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye, friends.